Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pokemon Speedruns Podcast Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. Uh, I am one of your usual hosts, Etiquette. With me, uh, two other hosts, we have Jordan. Hello. And Tucker. Hi. Um, and with us, we have two very special guests uh, to talk about Pokemon Let's Go today. Uh, we have Echi. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and New Amber. Hello, everybody. I'm excited. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's let's jump right into what we're seeing here. Etchy, you want to take this one? Yeah, so a lot of Let's Go going on. The tournament started. Um, we're looking at round one, race one. This is really literally the first run of the tournament, first race of the tournament. Um, I managed to get a one-second world record, which is one of those weird things that, like, you wouldn't expect to, like, be reasonable or, like, happen in any kind of like marathon run or race tournament type thing in Pokemon. Uh, but this is probably the only mainline game where you can actually kind of do that because you don't really have to change your strats until Agatha if uh, if you have like enough of a lead, you know? Um, so I was able to do that, which is really cool. Uh, this run is really interesting because you can see right now, I, I played it like super safe. I even caught things in like a weird order, like a suboptimal order because I was like, yeah, I already call this, caught all this stuff. I might as well just get this Pidgey too because... More experience is good for safety. Might as well just uh, max minimize the chance of getting owned later. Um, and then it just turned out to be a really good run outside of that. So that was cool. The run was like 258 pace for a lot of it until I had a really bad archer. And then from there, I uh, was playing a little bit safer, but not super safe. I still did like 2C Giovanni. Um, I saved before, uh, I think, Lance. Yeah, I saved before Lance. So... Um, a lot of safety stuff towards the end, but not too much outside of that. Um, and yeah, yeah, I was able to just kind of get away with a lot of things because the weirdness of uh, both like the tournament structure and also just being in a position where I could I could have enough of a lead to be like, okay, if I did die to like a random crit here, I could still have a lead and be okay. Yeah, I think I think you mentioned in your the uh, the post match about how um, like two controller Giovanni was something you basically commit to when you do your shop here in pewter because yeah. you either buy or don't buy the x defend so Not really yeah that's uh, one of those things that i i'm just gonna be locked into for every like tournament match even though it does lose a few seconds um not much i can do about it but that was basically the only safety strat i was like forced to do during the run so that was nice at least you can you can flip to the archer fight because it's really bad <laughs> Uh, it's like, what is that, like 210, 215 in, something like that? Like uh, 11, probably. Like, I think, it, oh, okay, I was just a bit there. The head 11 stuff. is very accurate. Good job, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can skip a little bit into the fight, but... Yeah, this is probably the worst thing that happened in the run. Just getting um, put into a really weird situation by the Golbat. This is like a super rare fight and super unlikely, unfortunate fight where, first of all, he gets to protect self destruct turn one, which is not great usually. Um, just kind of slows things down and uh, loses you the three turn possibility. But Golbat second, also not great in this scenario because I'm forced to get the Muck here still. Muck has a lot of bad moves, but the Golbat will crunch me here and it actually gets the uh, the drop. And the, the stat drop basically just put me in a really bad position for the rest of the fight. I had to spend two turns healing, and Cubone was not... I mean, Cubone kind of cooperated, um, but it, it could have been a lot worse. I, I, I basically just had to bank on Cubone killing um, towards the end of my turns, otherwise I was just going to lose. It was really scary. Very lucky it still worked out, but um, yeah, everything after this was, was pretty okay. I can't complain, because it was still good runs. <laughs> uh, I guess just as a question, what does... Muck have that you need to kill that over gold bat. Or gold bat. Like, uh, well, it has toxic and moonblast, right? Toxic, um, minimize, I think it has minimize. as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's only poison moves. Uh, it's toxic, minimize, protect, <clears throat> um, maybe sludge. Yeah, like all right, of it right. are terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the minimize is the nightmare scenario. You just don't want to see that at all. Also, Toxic just adding way more time loss to the fight and actually dying because of the way this Raticate is super aggro usually. Okay, fair but, uh, 
Yeah, it was cool. It was it was, it was uh, really shocking to get a run like this on the first race. Uh, I was really happy with how it turned out, even though it was just barely a PB. But uh, cool, cool to see that in a tournament run again. Very, very rare. You would never really see this in any of the other games, so that was cool. Hopefully we can see more, uh, more really good runs throughout the tournament. Yeah, it's it was kind of funny because, you know, before this race, because this was quite literally the first race of the entire tournament. Um, and before the race and even like continuing onward, we were always like speculating, oh, what's going to be pot one time? What's going to be like the cutoff for different things? Um, and one of the topics before was like, what's going to be the best race time? Um, and I think a lot of us probably would have said like a 301, maybe a 300. Um, just because of how you have to play in races typically, uh, and just right off the bat coming up with a 259, um, as like, this is, this officially means, you know, the best race time is going to be sub three, obviously. Um, and it kind of like puts that question to bed almost immediately. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I like, if, if you told me that somebody beats this time by the end of the tournament, I would only be like mildly surprised, but yeah. getting, what is very likely the best time in the tournament. Like, at, at, I, it's very unfortunate that I peaked round one. Uh, <laughs> I probably am not getting run this good for the rest of the tournament. But, well, uh, it's funny. It's round one is almost like the place where you'd expect to run like this. Because even though the competition is going to be, you know, fiercer later on, like, you're going to have to do things. Here you had that buffer of like, oh, if I get crit in the Elite Four, it's fine because I can still win the race. Yeah. Um, but you just, you lose that going into the later rounds. So you almost have to play exactly. safer, even though the competition's better. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really bad later when I'm like round four and I'm also on like a PvP pace running late game and then I'm going to have to make bad decisions and uh, <laughs> lose the race as a result. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But yeah, like I, I was literally in a position where it's like, okay, I'll, I'll only save before Lance and that way if I die to crit on champ, I can reload the save at Lance and still be on pace to win the race. Like that's that's just round one kind of pot one privilege uh, yeah. that I was able to have. So I never and, ran in this race PB, by the way, which was sick. <laughs> yeah, it's prob probably the only time we're going to see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just uh, statistically speaking. Um, Spider does bring up a good point, though, thinking it was barrier blitz. It just it blows my mind how much better everyone is. Yeah. Two years after mm -hmm. barrier blitz, like barrier blitz, we were all pushing for a 301 and I think the the winning you had the winning time at like a 302 30 ish something around there um uh, yeah with most of us in like a 304 range and here we've got a 259 in effectively a no reset run um and even amber yesterday getting a 301 in uh in their race was mm -hmm. like those are just times you don't expect if you're looking at this two years ago oh for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of the things that have happened in the last, like, it's really funny because I feel like since Barrier Blitz, there have been a lot of strat changes, a lot of improvement yeah. optimizations and all that. Uh, but really in the last, like, year, there hasn't been that many, like, big strat changes. The biggest thing that's happened is uh, learning the catch rate formula, which yeah. has allowed everybody to do much faster catches and be a lot more aggressive with um, uh, just just how fast you're throwing and, like, cutting experience when you need to. Because yeah. a lot of a lot of the time save that we're seeing now from from all the runs is just people realizing they can throw away faster. Uh, people getting better at cycles as well, just getting better at the game, uh, catching out of attacks faster. Uh, everyone's just getting better and better at it, so it's super cool to see. Uh, there have been strat changes for sure, but they're all there's nothing like major, major. I would say compared right. to like yeah. between variables and a year ago versus uh, the last year. So it's it's uh, super cool. I remember this was two years ago. It was two years yeah. ago. Yep. <laughs> the first 301 was basically like right around now because it was right yeah. after Barrier Blitz. Yep. Yep. Wow. Time has happened. Time has <laughs> happened. <laughs> Time does pass sometimes. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to point out about the, uh, the record run here? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else weird that happened in the run. I got a chance here, I think, right? Did I? I think you did. I feel like I probably did, but I didn't need it. Cause I had like a ton of experience going into Brock. Cause I got Bulbasaur, Pidgey, Rattata, some were glowing, stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, it was just like a, like it, the the run. Oh, I also had like a super high attack Pika, which didn't end up mattering like that much, but it was still really nice to just get random time saves here and there. But this run was just very like high experience is good plus not missing ranges plus plus attack plus uh just not getting trolled until archer so very uh clean run in general happy with it very nice um oh, okay. and i think did you get a shaman during this as well did you get rich out uh i don't know I, I just I thought, missed the tracker because it just flashed. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, you know, I, yeah. I could just... Yeah, just scroll the video, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can could, we could, we could find out. It does not like me going backwards, apparently. I actually haven't, like... Re I, I rewatched this run immediately after it happened, and then I uh, didn't look at it again. I didn't even try to, like, recreate the splits for, like, my own split file. i just been running against the old PV because I'm lazy. Um, I don't even know. I don't, I, remember, I don't remember a lot of things about the run. <laughs> Did not like me going backwards. Oh. <laughs> oh. This is what happens with technology. You technology. I don't even know why he's doing this. Yo, is Elon running it's YouTube fine. now? What's okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. The, literally, the only thing I remember was us giving you crap for misclicking the uh, Fury attack on Rival 4. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was oh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, I don't think in general my execution was like that great this run either. I, uh, I made a bunch of little mistakes like that. The Fury attack one was really bad, but. There is there, both there is a Char Bulbasaur and Charmander. These are Chansey on there. Damn. <laughs> there was Chansey, yeah. There was. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense. But um, yeah, yeah. In terms of RNG, it was, it was pretty clean until uh, pretty pretty good, I would say, until Archer. So yeah, that's it. That's all I have. All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we have a couple of other Let's Go runs as well. Uh, the next one here. This was just a couple, maybe like a week ago. Uh, Amber, do you want to take this one? Yeah, uh, so this is my very first time for three in Pokemon in Let's Go Eevee. Uh, second person to do it, other than Echi right here. Um, so before the tournament was announced, uh, I think my Eevee PB was like a mid-302 or something. And I had been kind of playing around around Eevee and Echi was to have a run of Eevee before the tournament. So I started running back in, and I got like, a ton of, ton of beef in a row. I got a 301 really, really quickly, and then I got a 300 like a week later, and then another week, and I got a 259. Uh, this run had just kind of had a really good EV and a really good experience. So the EV I got was Naughty with a plus attack characteristic, and I also got uh, like three special attack. AVs in my cycle, which for, for those who don't know, in Let's Go, like the kind of AVs that you get, you get the same AVs at like level 6, 16, 26, all those ones ending in 6, and you get like the same AV. Uh, so your AV will kind of come in like a cycle of 10. So I got a whole bunch of special attack AVs and a really good attack. Pika, uh, oh my gosh, Eevee. <laughs> Should have been Pika. Yeah, I'm gonna try, well, I'll try to do sub 3 Pika now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm working on that soon. Um, let's see, what you just saw there was probably the worst part of the run. Uh, <laughs> I got an Abra, and, uh, side throws are definitely one of the things of all time in this game. So, I missed the Abra. And then I missed the circle, so it broke out, and I lost like 20 or 25 seconds just on Abra catch. Um, I don't know. There were so many like weird things that happened in this run. Like at the at the very beginning of the run, uh, typically you don't like catch anything before you get to the forest lore. Uh, sometimes you'll have like a second Pokemon there. Rarely you'll have like three. Uh, I ended up having six by the time I got to the forest lore, because I, I just got, like, everything before the lore. Like, I, I got a, a bug on Route 2, I got Pikachu, I got Bulba, and then I ran into a Bellsprout that I just ended up catching. <laughs> so, I, I, was, I, I was in a situation where I almost considered skipping the lore, because I, I just already had so many things. Yeah. Um... 
I ended up getting a, uh, a super-sized Geodude uh, in Moon, which helped with experience there. But uh, what really got me really high experience was I got a super-sized Raticate on Route 10. And that got me a uh, double edge by, I think, the f at, right after the first trainer in Rock Tunnel. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, so that combined with how good my EV was, I ended up having, like, pretty much the best hideout, like, ever. Uh, yeah, I could just double-edge everything at the beginning of hideout, and then my special attack was high enough that I was able to two-turn both the Jesse and James 2 fight and the Archer 1 fight. So, that, that really helped. Um... Just looking at what else. I just I wrote down a note. I like when I do run, I barely remember anything about it after it happened. It just like exits my brain. Uh, so let me see. Um, I guess the other like fairly bad thing that happened is um, on the uh on Route Seventeen, like the cycling road route. Uh, I ran into a Pidgeotto, which was good because um. Like, I needed, I didn't have Pidgeotto at that point, but uh, Pidgeotto is kind of an annoying catch, and I already had, like, a fairly high catch count, so I was trying to avoid it if I could. I could have just gotten coughing instead, and that probably would have been better. But, um, I was in a situation also where I had to use using Ultra Pokeballs instead of Ultra Great Balls. Yeah, I caught, like, a million things on Route 10 in the Rock Tunnel. And so this Pidgeotto just, like, breaks out super quickly. Oh so God. I had <laughs> two breakouts on this run. Um, I also counted, I also had three extra encounters this run as well. So, uh, the spawn luck was not good, but, like, good, good EV stats, good EV XP just carries so hard yeah. in this run. Uh, ended up having, um, and then late game was, like, super, like, standard good. Uh, I had a good Staryu, I had had 27 IV special attack and 19 IV speed. Um, like, pretty much the entire last hour of the run, like, nothing bad happened. There was nothing, like, nothing, like, amazing that happened, but, uh, nothing bad happened there. And, uh, the only, I guess, thing to note at, like, the very end of the run, um, I ended up doing 2C champ because I knew, if I was on, like, 258 pace, I probably would have just done normal champ. But uh, I knew that it was going to be like a low two five nine, and I I I I was I was fine with just losing like the five seconds you lose doing two C camp to just secure uh, the sub three. Yeah, that's fair. I'm I'm sensing a pattern with the, now the top two EV runs where uh, if you just get a lot of experience, you kind of just like win <laughs> you kind of just like steamroll and speed through all the mid games super fast yeah I mean, um, you get xp like go so hard it does yeah it's huge and super like, super it, important for for me like i was thinking like this entire run i was thinking of like how bad that aver catch was i got two extra encounters in tunnel and i'm the entire run i was like oh because this run feels so bad like i don't know how how i'm gonna be able to turn this into a pb and I think I only noticed the run was, like, good, like, after, like, Archer or something, when I was, like, tied with my PB or something. Archer 2? Yeah. No. Like, that's when I realized that the run was, like, <laughs> actually good. And I thought I, for, like, I thought it was, like, barely sub-3 pace at that point for some reason. But I guess, it's like, nothing wrong happened in the last hour of the run. Yeah. So, just ended up uh getting that low 259 it's awesome but yeah the, I, I mean two breakouts three extra encounters like this just goes to show that like i mean i when when Etchy first got that 258 i mean i feel like we all thought that was such, like such an untouchable run mm -hmm. but now like looking at this it, it feels so much very doable to beat that mm -hmm. time yeah it's like even even when you're trying to explain because there's always the age old question of which one's faster, Eevee or Pikachu. And I think it's still still very much up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, Pikachu. Well, <laughs> there's Pikachu, unless you get 10 million eight. experience, then Eevee's better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, what I was going to say is like, uh, we always would have like, you know, Pikachu is probably faster. The current Eevee record is faster, 
but it like kind of doesn't count because it's kind of a fluke. <laughs> like Etchy's a great runner, but like the the run itself had like such weird stuff happen. Um, but but seeing you know a lot of people, uh, we we've got a couple more EV runs coming up uh, here as well. Just seeing more and more people get down closer to the three hour mark, um, and even surpassing it like Amber did here, um, it really shows that like you know maybe that that two fifty eight is probably not that fluky, um, like it, it is totally possible on on these good runs. So for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, in that in that two five eight, I mean, like you got like a million experience, but it's also balanced with the fact that you got like a million extra levels on other things. So, yeah, like, it's it's one of those things. Just like, oh, I saved thirty seconds on uh, Rival Three, but I lost thirty seconds on Jigglypuff leveling up. <laughs> yeah. So like, and I also had like a really bad start that run, and then uh, yeah, let's it that that run in particular is really weird because it's just like. I just got carried so hard by that, and there's a lot of like time losses and other bad things that like it's it's like your own right, like you were, you got that one really good thing, but there's still a lot of bad things that happen that you yeah, could have yeah. saved more time on, right? So exactly, the ceiling is still we're we're still not close to the ceiling. There's still a lot of room for for the time to go down for sure. It's just it's just hard to get all the RNG to line up. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that like everything to talk about in my run, uh. I mean, I could always go into, like, little one-second things, but uh, we don't be sitting here forever <laughs> on that. That is fair enough, then. Move on to T-Pat's run. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, T-Pat. Uh, another run from, like, the last week or so. Uh, getting the new third place with a 300.57. Um, I, I didn't have a chance to watch this run, um, but in T-Pat's words, I uh, didn't think this run was really possible due to the okayness of the early and mid game, um, but the end game really saved it. Uh, T-Pat's been on some some really good pace runs. He had a, another 300 mid pace run that died to um, missing a range on Champions Marowak, uh, which is a range that you don't ever think about. Um, and then another one that it was a 259 pace run that died to Sabrina. It was a misclick on Sabrina. So. Like definitely had a bunch of runs leading up to this one, um, but yeah, ever since T-Pat switched over to digital um, from physical to get ready for the tournament, he's definitely been PBing left and right. Um, I think it went from a three hundred four on physical now already down to a three hundred zero. He literally took the weights off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like just having me scrub through this run quick um catch count was looked pretty standard uh was this a chancy run this was not a chancy run this was a fable run i think i do and see, I do a, see Clefable. a Clefable, yeah yeah uh and i also see some other uh interesting things t pat's been a huge proponent of catching the second stage pokemon over on route 10 uh, it's it's really good for experience uh if you can do it right yeah. and um mm -hmm. I can see in his later catch route that he has a Nidorino and no Nidoran male. So uh, probably caught Raticate and Nidorino there for a lot of experience. If I remember right, actually, now that I think about it, I think he told me that he got it was like a glowing Nidorino. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Huge. A lot of experience. That yeah, That's actually another good point, too. So I mentioned earlier, like a lot of the time saving the last year has been just us, us catching faster because we know the catch rate stuff. But a, a lot of it, too, is we also just have way more XP than we used to because now we're like way more confident going for things like Raticate, Nidorino, Nidorina, Chansey, Clefable. Um, all those are so much more reasonable catches now because we know mm -hmm. that Double Great Ball actually improves odds pretty significantly. Um, so th things that like used to be scary like even things like graveler uh used to be pretty scary and now you can guarantee it if you want to use the raspberry yeah uh which yep. was just not even like a, like before you used the raspberry and it was like 80 percent, right so mm -hmm. um stuff like that we're just so less breakouts in general you're getting more first balls people getting better so they're aiming better and catching faster you're just getting way more experience than we used to and uh, as we just talked about experience is really really good <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, it's it's uh it's another cool side effect of learning the catch rate formula. Yeah, and like knowing that it's so much easier to catch, like particularly like eradicate, knowing that it's so much easier to catch that makes it so that you can you like feel more comfortable catching Rattata early, 
which means that you'll have higher EXP in the early game. Yep. So, I mean, it just helps out so much. Yeah. And um, also looking, I see that T-Pat caught a Nidoran female with a Nidorina in his party. So he actually caught uh, both of the, the second stage Nidos um, to help with his experience. And like, even with all that experience, he was only level 23 entering tunnel, it looks like. Um, so I think that that experience was probably very necessary. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see there it's a rare char kind of run. So um, definitely, definitely a good run. Um, and one that was a long time coming. Like, like I said, he's been he's been grinding like almost daily um, for at least since his round one race um, and was able to pull that out. I remember correctly like before he all this run like literally like either the day before or the same day before the run happened it, it, i know like i remember correctly, he was feeling a bit down about how his runs were going because mm -hmm. like misclicks happening on screen uh, just general rubbishness so then if i get in this time it's always always it's always nice when something like that happens mm -hmm. yeah and and a, a big thing is like i know that he's he's somebody who Whenever I whenever somebody gets down about a run, I always try to cheer them up or not necessarily cheer them up, but I always try to be, be like, all right, make sure you're learning something from your runs. Like if, if you have a run that goes poorly, what can you learn from it? And almost every day he would be DMing me like this is what happened today. These are the things that needed to go better. These are the things that didn't you know quite work out. These are the things that worked really well. Um, and so he was really taking that to heart and just like really, really analyzing all of his runs to try and get down there. And I think he's he's definitely not done. Um, I think he he wants to push for a 259 for sure. Um, but just sort of like the, the perseverance to go through a lot of that stuff was was incredible. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, T-Pat, like at work in between his breaks, he would be like doing comparisons between his PB and other runs, seeing where he could save time. So he's really put in like so much effort into this. Mm hmm. And congrats T Pat on the sub three oh one. Yeah. And I'd say one more run to talk about, Etiquette. I assume you know about this run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh this was third place uh when it was set. Um this is myself getting a three oh one oh seven in Eevee. Uh notable because this is my first PB this century. <laughs> um actually this decade, sorry. I was being a yeah, little... your last PB was before I even started running the game. It it was. Oh. <laughs> I mean, oh, this this game was fun because it was the fact that you got this PB before I even started speedrunning. Yeah, I uh, the, this my old PB was from September 2019, uh, so this was a long time coming. This was um, you're seeing here really the one of the weakest parts of the run. I think the the two weakest parts of my run were um, <clears throat> Rock Tunnel here. I uh. Getting to the Kangaskhan trainer, I had one catch, and it was this. And I ended up respawning the room, uh, which is something that I I just AOP brained, I think. Because um, it's not really something you do in any percent. But it ended up working out. I got a Zubat off of it. Um, and then I caught stuff throughout Tunnel. I got Rhyhorn in the very, very last room, um, which was nice. Because um, I've, had, I've had runs that were like a similar pace uh, to this that just don't get Rhyhorn and those feel really bad because just no Rhyhorn is an instant 40 second time loss uh, in Eevee specifically in Pika. You can sort of handle it, but yeah, this is me being like, I need a little bit more experience. So let me just go respawn the room. Uh, shouldn't have done it, but ended up doing it. Um, but yeah, the early game here was really, really good. Um, I think my catch situation was really good almost the entire run. Uh, the EV was very just sort of like standard. Uh, it wasn't really good or bad. Um, and then uh, probably the, the biggest low point of the run was uh, my EV actually died on Jesse and James 3, the one at the top of tower. Um, I was just in a situation. The, the fights have changed since I've done a lot of grinding um just because of the the new route where you don't where you keep sizzly slide um and you don't 
have buzzy buzz for the Jesse and James fight. So you don't sacrifice um, like a Jigglypuff or anything. And I was just in the situation where I got, um, I think it was glare and sludge um, into Eevee on turn one. And I ended up healing the paralysis instead of healing the health. Um, and so Eevee ended up dying that turn. And then I had to finish the fight basically with Rhyhorn and Nidoking. Um, I think I timed it out and overall it lost me about 45 seconds. Uh, so it still wouldn't have been a sub three with it. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what happened. And then I did the bouncy bubble and I, ha I healed off the paralysis instead. Um, where if I healed off the health and it just hit through the paralysis, then it would have been fine. Um, yeah, other than that, um, just really solid uh, end game. You can see here I had 54 planned uh, with Tentacool, so my catch, my catch uh, situation was great. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was just, like I said, it was just a really, really solid run um, outside of like these, that sort of 20 minute section, uh, I guess 30 minutes from tunnel through here. Um, and I, I definitely want to push further, um, but this was only I spent most of my time actually doing races and no reset runs. I think I only had like since coming back to the game, I've only done like three or so days of actual like grinding. Um, and I'm <laughs> otherwise occupied with other uh, games at the moment even though I have a tournament race to prepare for on Tuesday. So I, uh, I'll, I'll be back to, you know, try to get a 300 or a 259. But for now, I'm just happy enough that I was able to actually PB after three and a half years. Yeah, big GGs. And uh, next up, we have Etiquette's DK64 Rando <laughs> PB. <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah, I think um, I think that pretty much does it for the Let's Go focus for the month. I don't know if anyone has anything else. Um, obviously, the the tournament is still going. Uh, if you're on this channel, you just make sure you follow it because you will see those races pop up. Um, there's actually one later tonight, if I'm not mistaken, right? <gasps> yeah, I wonder no. who's in that. Who's oh, in no. that? Mm. <laughs> I can't wait to accidentally reset because I'm like too used to PB attempts now. <laughs> that, that, that was the other thing too. Was like, uh, the the last my my first race, I was like super like race minded because I just been doing races for like two weeks straight, and now I haven't done a race since that race. So now I'm just like <laughs> PB pilled, and it's gonna be rough probably. So I'm scared. You'll yeah. do fine. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be uh, tonight. I don't remember. It's it's 8 p.m. I don't know which time zone that is. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so 8 Central. Cool. Yeah, uh, 2 a.m. UK time. Whoa. Are, you, are you on tech for that, Jordan? I am on tech for that. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Edicott wants to take over. I, I'm going to double check some stuff. Uh, if, if I am confident my internet can handle it. I will. I streamed earlier today and it was fine. Uh, I just want to double check. But I might yeah. be able to. And save it. I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to save sleep. Jordan. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess with that, that's in the focus. Um, I think if there's anything specifically. Uh, I guess there's one thing actually, because once we are on the topic of Let's Go, um, there has been a lot of other really good runs that mm -hmm. happened this month like i think for, on the eevee for example other than etchy's world record i think the entire top seven has like they're all new pbs from the past month that and then like, as well wow. yeah. yeah and then like on the biggest side obviously etchy getting the world record but there was also some very solid pbs there as well so that's yeah that's, just, that's just what looking... you get with the tournament i guess <laughs> yeah yep. just looking at this list uh so Amber in second, T Pat in third, uh, myself in fourth. Ergote got a three hundred one twenty eight, which I feel like Ergote had like a three hundred seven when the tournament was announced. Yeah, like three hundred seven or three hundred eight or something like that. Um, 
Randall, who was basically in the tournament vicariously through us, uh, wasn't able to participate um, himself. Uh, Kick and Run got a, a small PB. Um, yeah, there have been absolutely tons of PBs. Head Bob um, PB'd. Headstrong got a new leaderboard PB. Uh, Triv. Like, yeah, just a ton of people have gotten PBs lately, which has been awesome. And just almost a... all of them on Eevee, just going to say. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Just as a quick question, is there going to be the top European winner now? Um, oh. I think so. My brain says yes. Unless, because uh, Science PB is not on there, right? Uh, but the, it beats Science PB. Does so, it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I didn't remember the time for saying, but that is very impressive. There's no 302s anymore on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Lol. moly. Um, oh, yeah, that's, an, that's something else to bring up, too. Is we, so round two started yesterday, right? Um, yep. And uh, yep. That, that was, like, the, probably the most intense race of the tourney so far. We... Uh, had Ergote and uh, T-Pat basically neck and neck lined up, just like perfectly synced up several points in late game. Um, super, super close race. Super exciting to watch. Uh, I think we'll have a lot more like really close races to this round and going forward in general. So it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, almost all of the races are going to be from Tuesday onward. Um, we've got, like, I, like we mentioned earlier, Etchy versus Aspect versus Joker is tonight at 9 Eastern. Um, and then the next race is on July 4th. Uh, and there's a race on the 4th, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 7th. Three of them on the 8th. Holy moly. Uh, one on the 9th. And I think there's still one that has to be scheduled. So Yeah. Uh, one to be scheduled, which, being from the looks of it, would be around the 6th or the 7th, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it is going to be absolutely packed. Um yeah, if you enjoy Let's Go Runs, this is going to be a good week for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I, when we scheduled our race, so my race is one of them on the fourth. And when we scheduled our race, I was like, all right, I'm actually, you know, it's going to be the second week of the round. So maybe I'll be like in the back half so I can tell <laughs> roughly what time I need, um, you know, for different cutoffs and stuff. And no, I'm going to be like the third upper bracket race, or I guess the fourth upper bracket race. Um, which I guess there's only six, so that's technically the back half, but yeah, but you, you were thinking you'd be further back, I guess, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, but it's funny how it's all worked out given all the various different things that people are, are doing, and it's also like, well, it's kind of day to day, 4th of July on the 4th of July, yeah, just happens to be one of those moments. Or one of those like scheduled periods where like most of it is kind of blocked out for everyone. Cardboard clash as well for some people later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the that was, that was the main point for scheduling. scheduling. It was like, like all right, it has to be like, like it next week, but, but it can't, can't be after this day. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are going to take a break now. I think so. All right, cool. So, uh, well, I think it's race thirteen from round one. We'll just have in the meantime whilst we're on break. But Edgy Amber, thank you for being on the podcast. I know you were thinking of heading off, Justin. That's all the case. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. All right, cool, cool. Always down to talk. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> Always down to I have love you this both. Game so much. Yeah. <laughs> Always nice to have you both on the podcast. Uh, you've both been on the podcast before as well, I think. I don't know this season, but at least last season. Mm. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely have you back again. If there is anything, but yeah, we'll be back in some amount of time. I don't know. I don't like putting <laughs> times on this. I'm I'm bad with it. Yeah, in a bit. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the PSR podcast. Um. We can start the second part of this podcast with um, 
on noted runs. Nothing uh, notable has happened in terms of leaderboard changes, so we're just going to hop right into the runs. Um, we have Matic T with our Red Classic PB, third place of 157.44. Um, looks like a pretty good Neo here, F4E9, so great attack, good special, and great speed as well. Um, according to him, this run had some pretty rusty execution, but obtained several good crits, and as you just saw right here in the highlight, he got Godish, which saves a lot of time, it's a great, uh, cutter option. Um, and just like later on in the run, he has a reset on... Surge can since in classic you can't mid it for those. I uh, just gotta get lucky. And um, other than that, it just looks like a pretty solid run. It really just picks up steam here when he gets Godish and um, not too shabby after that, considering he has a really great Nito. Uh, didn't go for Sylph Bar, but did Yolo Champ for, I'm guessing, the 157 clutch. So that's that. Congrats to Matt. This is probably something I should have checked beforehand, but with like the Nabi and Wong 57.44, how close is that to like world record, I guess, at this point? Uh, like... That's a good question. I know 157 was like his goal time. I was there like during this run mm. in voice chat, but um, I think, yeah, world record is a. Uh... Still the 156.29 by Xarian. Okay. So, yeah. 156 is like kind of the last minute barrier before you get to record. So, a lot of, a lot of runners just settle for the 157. Um, I think Matt does have like the slightest aspiration to get this record. Like, it's very doable. But, um, of course, Classic is just like it's even even more luck based than just like around the mill red glitch list, so it's gonna take a bunch. Did Red Classic have a bounty? Yeah, there is a red classic bounty. Um I believe it's just getting record will get you some amount of money, twenty five hundred. I might be making that up. Um I can check right now. I mean, either way, yeah. If like, if you were wanting to push that, that is a bit of a, That's a nice motivation for anyone. Oh, it's, sorry. It, it's definitely not twenty five hundred. It's only fifty dollars. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's it's still good money. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. Better than no money. If there's any contenders out there, you might wanna might wanna get started. It's uh, there's no deadline, so. First come, first serve. Also, like I, I like, so, like asking the break about like what F four E nine meant. I think I know. Is fifteen F in hex? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. that, is, that is. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's genius, but also I feel very stupid <laughs> for not realizing that. <laughs> yeah. So like the four and the nine, the defense and the IV calc. It's like wait. <laughs> It's a little confusing how we like, you know, in hex there's like numbers as letters, but I think it's it's to like prevent confusion of like one five and yeah, that like, be Christine worse. being like one and five for like two different mm -hmm. stats. Like it, it'll be it'll be like that. Yeah. But I, I understand why you do that. But, oh, okay. fifteen hundred for. World record by the end of the bounty per sources per 1500 in chat. 1500 for Red Glitchless, uh, Red Glitchless Classic. That, that, there were words there. Uh, Red Glitchless Classic is what I said. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a lot. But anyway, yeah. Oh, and the Room is apparently world record pace until channel the one. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, like, if you really wanted to go for it, I don't know if you. But I know Tucker just said that your aim was what I won fifty-seven. Uh, Matt, but I mean, if you are, if you really got the ability, 
if you were on reward record piece. Yeah. Hundred percent has the ability. Yeah. Um I guess maybe it's the that. it's whether you have patience and the willing to put yourself through this. Because world record grains are very tough. That's right. Yeah, I think that's probably rounds everything up. On at least for this run. So I'll let yeah, you keep going. There's a big factor in uh, variance classic, but yeah. Um, let's move on to Alo's plat 90% run. This is his third place run um, at 242.13. As you can see here, one of the big. Uh, low lights of the run, as we like to do on the podcast, he hits uh, optional in Jogger Raul. Um, of course, this is uh, the solo Goldic run. It's uh, not the world record tentacle run um, or route, you'd say. But um, still quite an impressive time for the Goldic route. A 242 is nothing to scoff at. Um, from what I know, like a 240 or a 241 would be like like a really satisfactory run for Golduck, but um, honestly, like at this point, I I see like a lot of runners just like actually just start running Tentacruel, um, the world record route, or not even like the world record route, just like Tentacruel, but um, not like a full extended, like path needed to get the Tentacruel because it's faster. Um, but yeah, uh, besides hitting the optional here, you also had a pretty bad. Set of gym leaders, pretty bad Maylene, Wake, and Candice. And um, at the end of the run on E4 Illusion, um, he got Light Screen and Crit Thunderbolt from Mr. Mime. So that that's just like a unlucky, like, you know, a fight where like you can just get unlucky there and lose like close to 30, 40 seconds. Um, it sucks how it's like at the end of the run, and it's like one of the things deciding your pace. But you know, that's how it is with Golduck. It's what you get when you play. So yeah. Um. How I know Owl has moved on to Tana Cruel along with uh along with um Rubentis. So but expect more like sub at two forty platinum times maybe soon. That would be hyped to see. Um. Because besides Besides like Sko and Worcester, we haven't gotten any of those um caliber runs. But yeah, we got some we got some plat percent players on the world record route, so it's gonna be good activity soon. I'll say we could be getting more over these next coming months, which would be nice to see. Indeed. <laughs> and here we have Worcester's uh HGSS world record. He has Done it again with a 330-31. So pretty sizable cut into the world record here, his own world record. Um, one thing that I don't think I mentioned in the last uh, last podcast, or last time I was on the podcast, was that um, the HGSS minute path is actually like improved um, just by doing like better movement and uh, routing a better... Uh, RNG frame for Voltorb Flip. I think Worcester is able to save like close to 10 seconds just by, you know, having a better path. Um, compare, I'm comparing to like 2022, 2021-ish when we basically everybody used the same minute path, including me. So it, it just makes it that much easier to get uh, better like Raikou times, better Winnie times and so on. But yeah, um, overall the run was pretty solid. Had a pretty uh, decent uh, time up to Raikou. Nothing too crazy, I believe. He Worcester did have like a 104 Morty, um, but this run ended up settling at like a 105 30x Morty. So not the greatest, but it's definitely still good. And um, obviously, once the Raikou section gets going. Um, the pace is kind of just locked into like how how good your fights are and how good like your spinners are. Um, not much can go wrong. So 
the places where he did lose time in the Raikou section is the Kimonos. Uh, had a few confusion hit cells on Umbreon and got Thunder away from Jolteon. Um, not many bad fights up until Red. I just got like a couple of protects here on um, Koga's Fortress and I think uh, Brock's Amistar. And then at Red, he was on 329 pace, but he got some pretty foul Blizzard luck. Um, he didn't get any misses from Blizzard, and he took like maybe like five or six of them. <laughs> and uh, he even got a freeze on Blastoise, uh, which I think was just highlighted here. So that costed like probably a minute on his best like red fight that he can do. And uh, that also costed 329. But um, other than that, still a good time. He's happy enough to put it, put HTSS on the back burner for now. I think he's like planning a, a run for Fire Relief Green for like ASM, an Australian marathon. But yeah, uh, he, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to come back sooner than later for 329, but he's happy enough right now, considering where the competition's at in HTSS. Sounds good. Thank you for going through the DS stuff. No problem. Right. So, uh, on to Pokemon Sword Get Urshifu. And I might as well take this over uh, for this yeah. bit. I've been, I've been looking into this run for, uh, for like the past week or so. But, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so uh, this is Power of Two Fists Get Urshifu, Zypotic with a second place time of 123.48. Um, this run could have very easily been world record. Um, it was just slightly unfortunate in the sense that Zyposic didn't really know what to do in this section when you get like an extra large candy, which off the top of my head it's a 5% chance of getting that behind the mayor's house. It's something like 5 or 10% in that range. Very unlikely. So there's not really much that you know about. So you might have, may have noticed quickly he was using Rock Smash. You don't typically like you teach over Rock Smash with a uh, Brick Break. I think you get that level twenty four for Kofu. It's five percent. Okay, good, good. I, I remember that. Um, but yeah, so just kind of unfortunate. I think you also teach Aerial Ace for the uh, the final fight against Mustard. And it's just a very it's like very quick if you know to use that, but given that I use Rock Smash, that'll lose a couple of turns here and there. Uh, just with it being a 40 base power move compared to 75 for Brick Break. I think, right, Edgecote? Should be 75. Yeah, 75. Yeah. 75, yeah, yeah. So, that was that. Uh, one interesting thing as well, um, didn't make a difference in this room because um, it's, I think, it's a low, it's a fairly low chance of getting it. But there's a slightly different um, candy pathing route. Try and get to that after Peony here. Um, so like because of this run now uh, with the candy route, you go to the Crown Tundra. Um, there's a few EXP candies lying around. Like I mentioned, the extra large behind the mayor's house. That's like the furthest one away. Um, but just a bit earlier, there's like one. I as you. Uh, I was going to say beat Peony, you lose to him. Uh, but as you lose to Peony, if you go to like your direct left, there's a guaranteed medium candy. Um, but in these two spots that Zypotic went to, there should be a a fairly low chance of getting uh, a Dynate Ore, which you can then go into like the, the Max Lair, where you do the Dynamax Adventures, and you can pick up a large candy. Um, and that's that can be used for Kung Fu. It's just uh, an extra thing that's a bit more consistent the runs. Um, this is, well, I mean, getting an extra large candy would be quicker than doing all that. Um, but given that it's only a 20% to get either a large or an extra large in that singular spot, and you're kind of relying on, or before at least, you were kind of relying on that, uh, you can get to do a lot more runs this way, and doing more runs tends to eventually equal world record, or PBs at a minimum. So... That is, uh, that is very helpful. It's also slightly different to the uh, don't get Urshifu candy pathing. I'm 
believe that hasn't changed where there's like five total spots overall where you can pick up um up to medium candies um some have like a 50 percent chance to get medium candy some have like 10 but you can get some of the other candies or oh, i think one spot is, even has a rare candy um i have been looking into actually adding those spots back into the get us route uh, get us food route um just for a sobble but i have uh yeah mainly because you get all, you'll save a lot of turns very early on as uh, spiders just put in chat um but yeah that kind of covers i think everything pretty much with this run you, you get your standard like pretty standard fights overall from what i remember so yeah Edgar, on to you for this next run. Yeah, so um, this is Halkyrie getting the Legends Arceus catch em all record, um, improving the old record by about five minutes uh, with an 8.16.31. Um, the distortions in this run were a lot better um, than the previous record. Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know, basically there are a few Pokemon that are only available in the space-time distortions which have some odds of happening at 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 25, and 40 minutes um, of you being in an area, and you can't control really how long they take. Um, so ended up getting really good distortion, or better distortions, I should say. They, weren't, they still weren't like optimal, um, but they were pretty good. And then... Uh, but what you're seeing here is Volo the Volo fight costing about nine minutes um, just due to an untimely death, um, as well as um, also had a bit of trouble getting the Metal Coat item, which is needed to evolve Scyther, because um, that's one of those items that is kind of like a random thing you find in the ground um, with Ursaluna, I believe. Uh, actually, it might be an Ursaluna item, or it might be a space-time distortion item. Either way, um, had bad luck getting it, so um, lost a bit of time to that as well. Um, I know Hulk is wanting to get the sub-8. Um, I don't know if he's currently grinding for it. Um, but it's also noted here that he did get the Shiny Charm world record, which is kind of like catch them all but instead of just catching everything, you have to get everything up to level 10 research. Um, and that run is up over 10 hours. I want to say it's like 14 or so. Uh, um, the world record is now 14 hours, 43 minutes and 15 seconds. There it is. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, catch them all record. GG's to Halk for that. Um, RCS isn't the most popular game, but it's cool to see it still, um, getting, you know, some improvements at the top level for sure. Yeah, because I know, uh, I know last month I think it was Blood Dirk I managed to get third as well. So there's a uh, not it's not just Hulk, because yeah, like they, like Hulk is probably most known like Hulk and Shady yeah, with their back and forth that they had over a good like few month period at least, right? I... Yeah, there was a fair amount of time. Time also blends together, so I don't remember fully at this point, but no, I, I believe I believe that you are you are right. Um, and it is one of those games as well that like, especially in any percent, there's the gap between the, the top two times and then everyone else is absurd. <laughs> hmm. But. Well, nonetheless. Yeah. I, I, I say that I'd do it uh, for Switch. Uh, we didn't mention 3DS because there wasn't anything that was like very, very high up in terms of like world record or anything around there so bit of a shame but hopefully maybe from next month we will see something in the meantime though pokemon pinball ruby sapphire woohoo um this is defeat rayquaza ruby field second place a 1741 uh only 13 seconds now behind amoeba's world record um if i remember correctly i think amoeba does prefer the uh I think it's I can't it's the the Kyogre field. I can't remember if it's blue field or if it's just Kyogre field. I, oh no, Sapphire table. There we go. I remembered. 
Uh, I think maybe to prefer that, but still, um, Bodron, uh, I think from what Amigal said, uh, it was just a bit short on the execution side of things compared to uh, what could have been for world record, but very solid look throughout. And yeah, it's, it's very difficult to get time saving pinball. It's not a long run. So as you get closer to that world record level, it's going to be few and far between, but hopefully they keep going. Awesome Reba to come back to pinball as well. Uh, but yeah, that, that was pinball. We also have a new emulator world record uh, for Pokemon Coliseum uh, by Sammy Lamy. Yep, Sammy Lamy. I don't know what, my brain just forgot words for a second when I was reading that. But this was a 329.57, which is the first emulator world record under 3 hours and 30 minutes. Um, and includes uh, Quilava dying <laughs> to Espeon using Confusion. <laughs> so that, that was the main thing to know. Um, but so uh, congrats to uh, Sammy Lamy on that. I uh, know they've been, like, the, the past uh, few months have been getting very solid times. And yeah, this. I don't know if they're going to keep pushing to try and get it further down or you know, play other games or not. Um, but yeah, uh, well done. And then finally, last but not least, uh, we have our eponymous Mystery Dungeon world record for the month. Uh, Explorers of Time beat Dark Rai No Wonder Mail English Emulator world record in 8 hours, 24 minutes, 31 seconds. I I think this is another new lead <laughs> with a skitty, uh, a skitty lead with Tozal as like, the partner. Uh, slightly, slightly slow on the any percent side, uh, meant there wasn't a PB there. Very good post game section. Uh, be able to beat the previous, uh, in Polymus's previous PB by 15 minutes. Um, there was also a hello for the PSL podcast in the SLC comment. So hello. <laughs> and yeah. Message received. Message received, indeed. And yeah, that that rounds out the noted runs for the month. So. I guess going on to the upcoming marathons, and who would like to take this away? Um, I can do it. Cool. Go ahead then. Um, all right. So marathon runs coming up. Uh, first one here, we've got Lady Arcaders Super Showcase 2023, uh, with Dijon Ketchup running Pokemon Blue Reverse Badge Order on July 7th around 6 p.m. Um, British time. The next one we've got Shine in the Dark um, with Shifty running red any percent glitchless blindfolded. Uh, that's going to be on the 8th of July uh, at about 12.30 um, British time. Uh, same day, a few hours later, we've got uh, Fast Pace for Pride 2023. Trivaria is going to be running Pokemon Scarlet Path of Legends. Uh, that's going to be right around 3 p.m on july 8th um about a week later uh australian speedrun marathon 2023 uh worcester's going to be running the fire red trainer tower it's going to be on july 14th uh just before 11 uk time uh, 11 p.m uk time um and then getting into some uh some marathons with some like multiple runs in them uh, we've got RBG Limit Break 2023. Uh, first up is Corbame versus Sanjan doing an Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire any percent race. I'm assuming they've done in the past Omega Ruby versus Alpha Sapphire, so that's what I'm assuming this is going to be. Um, and that is on July 21st. Uh, we're in around 2.30 in the morning UK time. Um, and then the following day, um, Halkyrie is going to be doing Pokemon Legends RCS any percent. That's going to be on July 22nd at just before 11 p.m. as well. Um, then moving on to ESA Summer 2023, uh, there are going to be two streams. Um, both of them have some Pokemon representation. Uh, starting off is TTS for Life doing White 2 any percent. That's going to be on July 24th around 5.30 UK time, uh, and that's going to be on stream two. 
uh, Cruel. It's going to be running the TCG Any% Percent No Ace. Uh, that's going to be on July 27th, about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, and that's on Stream 1. Later on that day, on Stream 2, we have 360 Chrism doing the Emerald Map Randomizer. Uh, that's going to be a bit after 5 p.m. on the 27th. Um, and then rounding out ESA Summer uh, for the Pokemon side of things on the 28th, uh, just past midnight on stream one is going to be Das Faro versus uh, versus Ava, uh, and that's going to be Colo, uh, Pokemon Coliseum, Umbreon versus Croconaw. And then one final marathon. Um, it is We Want JSR FHD 8. Uh, we've got Quo running Let's Go Pikachu, and that's going to be right at midnight UK time on the 5th of August. Leading off the marathon, it looks like. Indeed, indeed. Also, we do want Jet Set Radio Future HD. <laughs> At least I do. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, on to the cool stuff. I mean, I guess Edica, you may as well play. You're the lead organizer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we talked about it a bit um, during the focus part of the uh, podcast, but the Pokemon Let's Go, um, Pikachu and Eevee, any percent NMS tournament is currently underway. Uh, we are in just started round two last night. Uh, there's another round two race tonight um, in about five hours, a little under five hours. Um, it's going to be Etchy versus Aspect versus Joker. Um, and here uh, you can find the schedule. Uh, this is all of the races for round two. Uh, one of them is still yet to be scheduled, but it's likely going to be on like the sixth or the seventh. Um, and all of these races are going to be happening on either this channel um, or on the Pokemon Speedruns TV 2 channel. So you just add a 2 after the, the Twitch name. Uh, you can follow that channel as well and um, make sure you don't miss any of the action. Uh, the tournament is slated for six rounds, so round two is still very early. Um, but the competition, like we already had a pretty, pretty big upset yesterday. Uh, with Ergote, you know, knocking down um, T Pat to to win that race, so um, definitely some high intensity action here. Yeah, especially with the lower races, what well, like the lower uh, race side of things, because that's kind of a win or out type situation for the most part. Yeah, um, we we really wanted when we were. Coming up with like the format, we really wanted to have some sort of double elimination style um, tournament where we didn't want people to like you know learn the game and then immediately get eliminated for round two, uh, or immediately in the first round get eliminated. Um, and one of the consequences of that is a lot of the lower bracket races um, are very strict in terms of who who's going to make it. Um, and who's who's going to continue and who's going to uh, get eliminated. Uh, for the most part, I believe there are seven races and all of the winners will move on. And then it's the top two second places. Um, so in addition to doing your own race, you're also racing against the other racers um, in your round. And um, you'll notice that there's like a there's one lower bracket race on the fourth and then it's just a sea of those lower races um from the fifth fifth through the eighth like those are all basically going to be determining who is uh who's staying in and not so it's um definitely definitely something to watch it's like the the higher stakes are in the lower bracket um but like the the upper bracket probably has more room for like upsets and stuff so it's like you you really want to watch both um you really want to watch all the races from both of them yeah um also if you do happen to be watching um i haven't updated the i haven't checked if there's been any new comment form but mm. if you are wanting to do a commentary as well if you're familiar with the run um feel free to in the discord or join uh, join up in the discord and then uh, fill out the country form link in I assume it's in important links, right? Uh yeah, it is. Yeah. Or so... if it's not, I can make sure it is. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah. but yeah, and 
even, even if even if you um even if you you're not an expert at the game uh but want to learn uh or are interested like that uh a underrated commentary trope is the person who doesn't know much and is asking questions to somebody who does uh because you would tend to be asking questions that viewers might be wondering themselves so um you know even if you like you don't have a ton of you know experience in the game or any experience at all uh don't let that prevent you from signing up because if you if you get paired up with somebody who is really familiar um it can be it can still be a really good thing Another trope I also like is just pure chaos. So if you want to bring that <laughs> as well, then feel free. <laughs> Absolutely. Got a yeah. little bit of both in the race that I'm planning to coming to planning to commentate. That's, that'll be a fun race to both watch and to listen to. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you all like blocked that out instantly. Yes. <laughs> the race wasn't even scheduled yet. <laughs> yeah, we were we we're all like watching the draw and we were like, okay, we gotta get the the one with Pokey Guy. <laughs> Well, there is a reason, and we, we, I don't want to say it yet, but you know, uh, we'll get there when right. the race comes. Looking forward to that. Also, that's a very good time for the UK as well, so or anyone in Europe. So, yeah, shout out to scheduling times at European friendly times. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, you may as well keep going because this is a uh, also. Uh, oh yeah this. yeah so uh this is not exactly pokemon speed running but kind of pokemon speed running related because we're all pokemon speed runners who are involved um etchy who was on the podcast earlier um is putting together a little bit of a an event uh next weekend where he's taking um eight pokemon speed runners who have never played the pokemon trading card game uh teaching us how to play the game uh, and then hosting a bit of a tournament over on his channel um it is really exciting we're all being flown out to chicago um and yeah i definitely definitely recommend uh checking that out um it is let me get the list of people um it is myself um ava shablagoo uh shelty sai sparkle swiftaloo the fourth gen gamer and thomas patrick wx um, and then there's a, a bunch of other people who are helping um, run it. Uh, Corvame is doing a lot of the tech, Frozen Flygon, um, as well as uh, we got a hold of uh, It's Victor, who was somebody who was big in Pokemon Legends Arceus speedrunning. Um, when the game first came out, apparently uh, is actually a really big TCG person, is currently competing at the NAIC that's happening right now. Um, um what i heard they went nine and no yesterday so they, they did go nine and no yesterday yeah <laughs> oh okay um so very so, good <laughs> uh yeah so he's gonna be there as well to i believe do some of the commentary um as well as jake gearhart who's another uh pretty prominent tcg figure so um it'll, it'll be a really cool thing uh we're all really excited for it and like i said that is happening basically a week from today so Uh, and then I guess last but not least there is not a thing to show in the background for this so we'll keep this in the background um, I will be on Hotfix tomorrow doing Geto Shifu uh, uh I don't know if it's just this one off or if he has like this one off a break and then I think it's like he has a show afterwards or like one off shows afterwards if that makes sense mm -hmm. um but yeah, uh, his first one will be tomorrow, I believe. For mine, like mine is in UK time. It's five to eleven in the evening. So mm -hmm. feel free to join that if you like Pikmin. Uh, you can also watch Pikmin before that. I think that is from nine PM UK time. But uh, yeah. I should probably tweet about that or something. <laughs> <laughs> I am terrible for announcing things. I like putting things out of my end. But yeah. Uh, Tower, Tower of Two Fists, Get Oshfu, Great Speedrun. Um, please watch. <laughs> and I guess onto the, the Leaderboard Roundup, unless there's any other cool things. 
that I may have missed out or forgot about. I can't think of anything. Cool, cool. Me neither. Also cool. So, in that case, uh, if there's anything on the leaderboard roundup, feel free to shout it out. Uh, for example, any percent glitchless, fifth place for Grogi with a 145.38. Very solid time. It's an extremely solid time. It's a great time, in fact. Um, Wanli in 28th with a 147.48. And then just behind uh, Priya with a. Priya? Priya? Priya, perhaps. Um, with a 148.12. Hello, T-Pat. You're cool. Um. Sixth place for El Revolver uh, in any percent glitchless classic, a 158.12. Good at being simple in eighth with a 158.40. And then Ananan in 11th with a 159.51. Just getting sub two. Congrats there. A few any percent runs as well. Uh, Jaddy Wee. They've been grinding any percent, I feel like. I feel like I remember that name from past League oh. World Roundups. Yeah, Jadiwi um, has actually been playing glitchless, and within like a, within like two weeks, he's gone from a one fifty to one forty six. Oh wow! But um, yeah, none of his runs have been like recorded. They're they're just like doesn't have a capture yet. But um, pretty impressive for uh, such a fast improvement to happen. So excited for Ja to get a a cap card. But yeah, I think he's been playing uh, 80% been after that. The only emulator. Like emulator. Yeah. Um, shout out to SBD uh, Wolf uh, in 12. Playing. Uh... Oh, sorry. I just read that GBI Speed Ring Edition. I, I don't know why in my head I read that as like the, the SNES Super Tower thing because of the SNES control. Oh. But still, though, fair play to SBD Wolf. Uh, I know. And the more of the, the, the PMD runner for the later ones, especially, I believe. So, congrats there. Uh, yellow, any percent glitchless classic. And you're light with a 20351. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm good in ninth with any percent, a 125.061. Very important to include that. Uh, someone uh, running gold uh, with Manipolis. Good at being simple. A 324.56. Not common to see. Main in 6th for Elite 4 round 2. Uh, a 331 flat. With a rifle 2 death. So that's a... I mean... I, I know, like, the main focus is on 8%, but the fact that 6th is almost 2 minutes behind, like, 2 minutes and 5 seconds behind, that, that is, that's getting some close, that's getting close at the top as well. Yeah, so. e, e for round 2's board starting to get pretty good. Yeah, has, uh, has the math genius been doing runs of this still? Um, yeah, he's still playing both 80% and round 2. Because like he's so close to record from both that he's he's just doing world record attempts all the time now. Well, hopefully we'll see a, a PB on uh, from them soon. Uh, also, Chupi Toothy twentieth with a two hundred five hundred one. Uh, one of the the breakout stars or new uh, the new breakout stars like new to the run. Uh, from the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament. The fair play there. Uh, Ekman in third on the emulator leaderboard for uh, Emerald. 80% glitch was a 235.54. Uh, just over a minute behind world record there. Mentioned Al was, uh, was run earlier. And Lewis has run. But Line, uh, Line was here uh, in ninth with a 336.17. Seeming to just sneak in based on. Uh, 0.96 at the end in the common. Tucker, your fourth place run that you removed from the noted runs for the podcast. 
Yeah, I only want to remove it because it was fourth place. Everything else was like third or better. But yeah, um, this is a 341 that I got just a few days ago in XY. Um, I was grinding this category for about like three months off and on. Mm-hmm. But um, I finally got some time to like fully grind after I got back from GDQ. And um, yeah, happy to get this time. Very satisfactory. I always wanted a 341. Um, yeah. You gonna push a bit further, or are you done with this? I am done. Uh, X X is like one of the categories where it's like super not worthwhile to grind at a top level, and I really do feel that way. Uh, Yeah, sometimes it's a lot more fun just to get a really good time and then leave it there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's that's my plan. Uh, second on the end later leaderboard in Ultrason, or Ultra Moon, I guess more likely, uh, Daniel0114 with a 717.53. Just fair play on finishing that run. It's a long run. <laughs> right, especially for any, any percent run as well. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people. Um, I guess I want specifically to mention um, that we hadn't already mentioned before. I Leave at least anyway for some of these because I know I think I went through a few after. Uh, Head Bob with a 30533, Truly with a 30802, uh, Sandy Beach with a 30851, uh, Fortunate with a 33044, uh, playing the game at GTQ, I believe. Uh, and then. Two through seven. <laughs> yeah, two through seven, just all PVs. Uh, with two of them even. Two of the people even not being in the tournament, uh, for whatever reason, or for like different reasons, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. Ed Strong, I know you mentioned as well. Head Bob with another PV, uh, three or four or three. Um, you know the Matt, uh, also known as King Trubs, uh, with a three or seven twenty four. Uh, Morgrim, also known as Gavin and BD, with a three or seven twenty six. I need to update the uh, the the thing that I guess the names on. It's been a while, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh, wait, actually, no. If I remember from Matt, I don't think he could get the SRC username. That's why that one, at the very least. Maybe the same for, uh, uh, for Gavin. Um, also, it's not here because it was literally last night, but Iron, actually, uh, one of our oh, usual yeah. hosts, uh, PB'd in Pikachu during the tournament race yesterday. So got a three, yeah. uh, basically a better 310 uh, than he had before. So... Really, really awesome to see that in a, especially in a race like that. Definitely. Um, and also, uh, Phoenix Melia with uh, a 3.26.15. Uh, also very new to the run in terms of like, only picking up just before the, the tournament as well, I believe. Yeah, she picked it up because of the tournament, basically. So. Yeah. Great to see the there. improvement. Yeah. Um not just being any percent though, all attainable Pokemon. Heart Moon in twentieth with a seven thirteen fifty-three. Uh and then Randall in fifth with a five thirty-four sixteen. Um a five of five is a ridiculous time from you, Etiquette. <laughs> I yeah. Yep. That's yep. all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, it's just yep. I saw the uh, clip. Recently, I was going through my clips for something, and I saw the clip recently of my Route 15. I literally open my menu before I go on to 15, and I'm like, "All right, need a really like a decent pincer, and then we we're in, on good pace." And I walk out of the thing, and there's a pincer right there. And I was just like, <laughs> "Okay, nice one percent encounter in my first three spawns on the route." All everyone's pincer look for the next two years with that. Yeah, I, it's the kind of run that I will not attempt to beat. Like, I've never had a run. I've had runs where I'm like, I don't want to try and beat, but I've never had one where it's like, I just I cannot try to beat this. <laughs> it just will not go well. Yeah. Uh, did you? Then your light uh, for the shield, uh, any percent in Japanese, 1.2.0 plus. Fourth place with a 423.02. Uh, 
Uh, we mentioned Zyposix Ruin earlier. Uh, we mentioned both of Hulk's. Well, we mentioned more the Catch More, the Shiny Charm, uh, just to show the time for that one. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Scarlet and Violet. Uh, Yuki Sai for fourth with the 8% glitches on the Japanese side, a 5.36.22. And then Ozapoke with a 5.42.15. That's a Japanese name I'm not as familiar with. Um, I'm nosy. <laughs> okay, so it seems like they, ha they haven't. Oh, they apparently have done uh, Sword Shields. I've. Clearly forgot about that. My apologies to them. Uh, but they've also done uh, Ruby Sapphire and apparently uh, No Vector. Going through all nine of the like main games that aren't remakes, I guess. At least I'd yep. assume that. Um. Anyway, though, Path of Legends, uh, Mocha Jones in the eleventh, the fifty-five ten. Uh, Lucky in 17th with a 104.17. And then Sergeant Schnitzel, Schnitzel? Yeah, Sergeant Schnitzel. I hope pronounced that right. With a 9th in Victory Road, a 226.47. A Pocket Monster Stadium run. The Japanese version, I believe. Okay. Yep. Um, Fourth place for Bruno. 06 with a... 3804. That might have just been a chance that it could have just been Bruno, but whatever. Uh, but Bruno is the way I can read it there. Uh, stadium. Uh, Jim Lee the Castle. Uh, Jim Lee the Castle round two. Switch Virtual Console world record a 352.33 from uh, RDA. Uh, third place on Switch for Sailor's Arclis, a 22-19. Uh, fourth place on the Sapphire Field for Defeat Rayquaza, uh, Nagai Megum with a 14-53. A uh, couple of console emulator... Uh, console emulator. couple of console Coliseum runs. Uh, 20th for Gerdra. With a three forty one twenty seven, and then thirty second place for Chippy Toothy. So they've moved on to Call Team, or with I, actually to be fair, I don't remember if the if I read the rumor was before this one or after. Either way, they found some time to run Call Team. Um, Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team, fourth place, a uh, fourth place for Cabral in any percent, no quick save, no wonder mail, English DS slash GDS slash GBA. Uh, two thirty-seven thirty-eight. Mentioned eponymous earlier, but fourth place for Cinder Dog, uh, in Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Any percent no gummies. A four oh seven fifty-seven. Uh, Fodo. Uh, more of a Colo or X E runner, but running Pokemon Channel. Any percent single console. Fifteenth place. Forty-eight seventeen there. Uh, going on to the category extensions now. Uh, Boot catching contest, sixth place for good job, Mr. 2%, 46-41 there. Uh, second place on emulator uh, for Manipolis, any percent, Yaxo with a 102.51. Only 10 seconds behind world record. Getting close. Getting very close in. Uh, world record for manipulous glitchless on the emulator for Lucas, uh, a four oh three thirty three in platinum. That uh, hard gold or silver? Um, I think which is the best one. We'll go with the first one. Twelve uh, for Paris ten with a three forty six forty six on manipulous on console there. Uh, fourth place on the emulator for. Uh, for Matt with a three forty six thirty one. Uh, Charlie Stradling in ninth with a three forty nine thirty. Uh, world record in all main pokes for Ralligator for Kayoch or Kayosh, a four oh three forty four. Uh, a lot of French runners <laughs> again. 
they love the Ichi, so they that's... they do. They definitely do. <laughs> uh, Bill Bonsai in second with a four hundred seven fifty three. Uh, Kyrie extensions for Let's Go. Even even the run there. Head Bob with a three twelve fifty five for Alt Main Garados. Nice. Alt mains in Let's Go are not super popular, so it's cool to see. Yeah, they are not indeed. Um, Soul Shield though, tra uh, trade uh, trade all mains, very popular. Uh, yes. Psychic Champion with world record with a four thirty three forty one in his whole main Heracross. What do you both think of Heracross? Good poke. I like it. Cool. Pretty bad bug um, moves. Yeah. <laughs> BDSP Baton Pass World Record by Silver. Uh, a 1... Oh, I don't know why I said 1 there. A 4.29.22. Almost 3 hours quicker. Was what I was almost going to say. Uh, stadium category extensions. Uh, minigame champion Stadium 2 hard 7 tokens world records for Ukraine. A 3.48.8. Uh, trading card... Uh, all right, TTG uh, carrier extensions. Uh, the Jeff and Man 5, a 54.35 in single segment, no tutorial. Uh, Frank C in third with 80% new game plus, 51.31. 80% round two, the Jeff and Man uh, there with the world record as well, a 19.16. Then Frank C in second with a 20.33. And then last but not least, to round it all out, Snap category extensions. Uh, Jinx percent on the switch. Uh, Kuru is actually with the world record with 32.39. That's been the leaderboard roundup. All right. Okay. Ezekiel, thank you for being on the podcast this month. My pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, thank you as well to Etchy and Amber once again for being on the podcast earlier for the Let's Go segment. Uh, the next podcast, as of right now, uh, tournament depending, uh, it should be on August 5th. Unless something's happening, there's not anything happening that week normally, right? No, not that I can think of. Cool. So it should, in theory, be on August 5th. We will keep you updated, though, if that changes. Um, any other last words? Nope. We're all done. All done. <laughs> Wonderful. In that case, I hope you all have a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.